Hey folks, we're doing a project with rough lumber. Today we're going to take a look at tree selection, portable sawmill, and then stacking these up to dry. So we want nice straight trees, foot and a half, two foot diameter. I remember, portable sawmill, they're going to cut the sides off for the bark. You're going to be left with a smaller diameter. So you want to end up with something 12 to 13 inches. It's going to fit nicely through your thickness planer. You want to look at the height too. You want straight all the way up. Not too many large knots from large branches. These are in an old growth forest. So they're growing pretty straight without side limbs. And you gotta think about the length of the boards that you want. Something like 10, 12, 14 feet. Good, so when you're cutting this, you know, right about there, 30 feet up, split into a, a V in that tree. So we can make, um, you know, a couple 15 foot length or three, 10 foot out of this tree trunk. Also, you want to select trees that are further away from your house and property lines. There'll be less chances that there'll be nails in those tree trunks. When you do your cutting, you can start further up. Most of your metal is going to be in the lower six feet. Anytime that the portable sawmill cuts through metal, it's going to ruin their saw. It'll cost you, you know, $50, $75 a piece. You might also try using metal detector to find any potential uh, trees with metal in them. So we had the portable sawmill here about 10 years ago. These boards have been drying for about 10 years. Great for working on, on the projects. Had to specifically ask uh, the operator, you know, from where we want, how many beams we want. Um, talk about flat sawn versus quarter sawn. We did it all flat sawn to maximize the amount of boards we got. We mostly got one inch thicknesses here. Great for playing down to three quarter or half inch. Also got some thicker two, two inch. We ended up with about 2,000 board feet. This pile was a few feet taller. Been using some of the lumber projects over the years. When you're stacking, remember pieces on the bottom, sides and top are going to get to be the dirtiest. Stuff in the middle is going to stay the nicest. I set it up on some cement blocks. I have some sleepers going across those. And then additionally, stack two by fours all the way down. Use a brush to brush off all the sawdust. And you use stickers. It's three, three quarter inch plywood. You need a lot of them. And go above each of those sets of two by fours there. Put down your first row and keep stacking all the way up. Keep it all nice and level. Everything evenly spaced. You'll have the best chance of these drying and staying nice and flat. Even these pieces up on top that are getting a bit stained from water getting through the tarps I have on here. Get just a few few times through the planer that cleans right off and you have really nice lumber. Last thing, after your pile's all set, I use two really large tarps. The first one is gonna do most of the work. The one on top is gonna get damaged from more from the sun and start breaking apart. Make sure it's tied really well. I use ro rope on all four corners, bricks, logs, whatever you have to do. Make sure those aren't gonna blow off in a storm. All this lumber I have is from three large red oak trees and one white oak tree. Finally, I'll leave you with a few photos of the sawmill operation. This was a one-man operated portable sawmill. I had to enlist the help of a friend to move boards as they were cut. And finally, we were left with a lot of nice lumber, a lot of cutoffs, and a big pile of sawdust. Don't forget to press that subscribe button to catch the rest of the series.